Thanks for joining us on our weekly look back at the great drivers, cars, races, mechanics, and memories in IndyCar and open wheel racing. Today, our subject, Lone Star JR. Three-time Indy 500 winner, Johnny Rutherford. Now, I was lucky because I was 15, 16 years old the first time I saw JR drive a sprint car at Terre Haute. I had no idea what the cushion was, but I saw this dirt flying through the air and this guy riding the rim around the top of the track going fast, and that was my introduction to Johnny Rutherford. Next time I saw him, he was at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway in 1963 as a rookie. Now in 62, him and Jimmy McElreath had spent the night in a park because they couldn't afford a hotel room, and they bought a general admission ticket because they were IMCA sprint car drivers at the time, and Indy was their goal. Actually, that's all they ever thought about, Rutherford said, in the early 60s. So he makes the race in 63. He dodges death in 64 in the Sax McDonald crash. Uncle Bobby hits him in the Novi and knocks him through the fire. You've probably seen that amazing picture. 1965, he wins his first IndyCar race at Atlanta for A.J. Watson. The same season, he's the USAC National Sprint Car Champion. And believe me, the, the, the road is paved for him to be a star after that because that's who everybody was talking about. Well, let's go to 1966. He gets hit with a rock, knocks him out at Eldora in a sprint car race, and he goes out of the ballpark in this famous picture. His arms, you know, extended. They, he breaks both arms, gets a bad concussion. He's out of racing the rest of 1966. And that was really a setback because he was on, you know, he was the flavor of the month. Everybody was talking about John Rutherford in 1965. So, in the late 60s, he still got rides, but they weren't the best rides. So he tried a little too hard sometimes. He crashed a lot. Got the nickname Johnny Reckerford. So you're thinking maybe he will never make it. He might not ever get that break that's going to, you know, set him free. But 1970, he almost wins the pole at Indy. And Al Lynch barely beats him, and that puts him back on the radar. And from that moment on, people were talking about him. He had the Thermal King ride in 72. And in 1973, when Team McLaren went racing, they hired Johnny Rutherford. And if you ever saw Rutherford and the McLaren at Indy back in the 70s, running the high line around the speedway, it was breathtaking. If you're sitting in the observer's booth, the USAC observer's booth, you were probably going like that and wincing because he came so close to the wall. But he used that style and that aggression to start 25th and win the race in 74. Came back in 76 and won the rain-delayed race. There's a picture of him and his wife Betty walking victory lane. And in 1980, he became a three-time winner with Jim Hall's Yellow Submarine and the Chaparral. But I think the thing that embodies Rutherford, the memories that I really like, are the fact that he never, ever lost confidence in himself, even when other people did. He always thought he was going to make it, and he drove as hard as you can. And I, I just think there was something about him, because he was such a good ambassador with the fans and the media, he loved being part of the Indianapolis 500 and then becoming one of the best drivers there. And it just it was a great little relationship because he never forgot where he was from, always made time to sign an autograph, post for a picture, give an interview. It didn't matter where the paper or the radio station was. Just a really charming guy in every way. And I think that always stayed with him, and that's why he became so popular. But my favorite John Rutherford story, 63 or 64, he's sitting in the qualifying line, and Lloyd Ruby saunters up to him and goes, Rutherford, now don't you let us Texans down. You go out there and put this thing in the show. Well, of course he did. And of course he didn't let the Texans down. And he certainly didn't let himself down. Because Lone Star JR was not only one of the great ambassadors, he was also one of the greatest ever at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. So this is our salute to him. We still want to see him at the racetrack. We wish him well. Robin Miller, see you next week.